Thank you very much, uh, Malcolm. And uh, it's great to be here with leaders and thinkers, mayors, innovators on uh, the circular economy and zero waste. Uh, I had the privilege of attending and uh, addressing a zero waste conference as the environment minister for the province many years ago. And so I love to see how things have progressed and BC remains a, a leader in our country. So congratulations uh, to those of you who are part of that leadership and thank you for inviting me to be here today. So I'm here to announce the launch of a new Center for Greening Government that will be taking place in the Treasury Board with the objective of reducing the greenhouse gas emissions of the federal government. And I'm, I've had the privilege on behalf of our president of the Treasury Board, Scott Bryson, to lead this project since last May. And I'm, so I'm thrilled that it is coming to fruition with a big first step uh, that was announced yesterday in the House of Commons. What we're doing is supporting our government and our country's intention to be leaders in climate change, and we've seen a number of steps to that end, including at the Paris conference where we committed to 30% uh, below 2005 levels of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Since then, we've, we as a government have been collaborating with the provinces and territories to bring everyone on board to support that target. There's been an announcement of a national framework for a price on carbon, a commitment to removing subsidies, and now what our government is doing is saying, we have to get our own house in order. And so that's exactly what we're starting to do. I had a chance to bring BC's expertise and leadership to Ottawa on this, bringing the executives from the Treasury Board Department out to Victoria for a day's worth of learning about how British Columbia implemented its greening government initiative and its carbon plan meeting with uh, UBC, which is doing a lot of work to uh, innovate and reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, meeting with the sustainability office in, in Vancouver, another green leader municipally, as so many of our municipalities are, and working with the US Government Office of Sustainability. So through that, uh, that connection and that work, uh, Christine Harada, who's the Chief Sustainability Officer in President Obama's Office of, uh, um, Office of Sustainability, working with the comparable organization to Treasury Board in the United States system, uh, Christine and I proposed that greening government should be in the tri-countries declaration between Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Uh, last June, and so indeed we have committed to greening governments as a way of working together across these countries. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a very strong signal to the public servants and public service of all three countries that we are serious about this leadership and about getting our house in order. So a bit more about the new Center for Greening Government. This is a center that will, it, for the Canadian government operations, will track emissions centrally, will coordinate our efforts across government and drive results to make sure that we meet our objectives. And so uh, currently we have about 15 departments that are tracking and reporting and reducing emissions but not all of their emissions are being tracked and reported. And it is voluntary, not obligatory. So we have a lot of work to do to build on uh, the, the excellent and committed people in some of the ministries doing work in various ways and bring this into a coordinated uh, results-based approach. So we'll be exploring how to use scorecards to be transparent so that you and others can track how we're doing 
We'll explore how to expand the number of departments uh, throughout the government and uh, other agencies, governments responsible for, and have them in this count and in this, uh, um, this objective of reducing our emissions. We'll be exploring other sources of emissions, not just buildings and vehicles, but looking at green procurement, looking at waste reduction, uh, looking at government's operations, the activities of our public servants and their travel and commuting, and exploring and, and implementing a range of carrots and sticks to make sure that we make the progress that we want to make. Across government, we also will be making strategic investments in areas like clean technologies and green procurement, and that will help us to reach our targets and benefit both the economy and protect the environment. Already the federal government earmarked over $2 billion to do exactly this for repairs and retrofits to the federal government's wide range of properties and buildings and for other greening government activities. And I, one example that I want to mention is in the National Capital Region, we'll be retrofitting and modernizing six heating and cooling plants that serve more than 80 government facilities, and the reductions will be 45% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Across the Government of Canada, two departments, Public Service and Procurement, which is Canada's largest landlord, and Department of National Defense, which of course also accounts for a, a large share of greenhouse gas emissions, have both been participating in this planning and have brought forward their own goals. So for example, uh, by 2025, I believe, the Department of National Defense will have shifted its Alberta facilities across Alberta to renewable energy. And by 2030, the, or 2025, public services and procurement will have shifted 100% of its buildings to utilizing clean energy. So we'll be following environmentally friendly practice, buying practices, supporting clean energy, for example, with uh, our electric vehicles, creating new approaches for green uh, procurement, and uh, various ways that we can reduce emissions right across the government. Uh, so this, our government doesn't have control over the full carbon footprint of the country. But as one of the biggest employers, consumers of energy, managers of properties, and purchasers of technology, we can leverage that very significant influence and accelerate the move towards cleaner, more innovative, and sustainable economy. We can be a test bed for innovation. We can be an early adopter of new technologies and ideas, such as the ones that we've been learning about today. As we move to reduce our carbon print footprint, one of the most efficient and cost-effective ways to get there is to dramatically reduce waste, waste in the day-to-day -day operations of the federal government. So, you know, having been a member of GVRD's Solid Waste Management Monitoring Committee well before my political career started 15 years ago, I remember wrestling with that challenge of industrial and residential waste going into the landfill. So I love to see how much movement there is on that and how much of a priority that is uh, in the discussions today. So we'll need to work closely with lead thinkers such as those of you in the room, and we'll be working very closely with the private sector. And after all, reducing emissions means saving costs and creating jobs. So our intention through the Center of Greening Government is to publicly and regularly disclose how much energy we use and the emissions that we produce and how our reductions are going. So along with me and the new Center of Greening Government, I invite you to make sure that we stay on track in this very ambitious but necessary effort. And I look forward to working with you, with our municipal leaders, to discover the new way forward and to accomplish our greenhouse gas re reduction goals. So thank you very much.